you are live. All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I call to order the regularly scheduled virtual meeting of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board on Wednesday, March 6th, 2024 at uh, 7.01 p.m. Members present are myself, Elizabeth Conger, Brian uh, Chitwood, Dick Peterson, and Chris Sheehan. Um, our, also present are Assistant City Attorney, Mr. Lyles, and Deputy City Clerk, Cynthia Gaines. Um, has the board reviewed the minutes of our last meeting? I move they be accepted. Second. The minutes are approved. Um, before we begin our regular business, I'd like to state for the record that since this is a virtual hearing, anyone wishing to submit public testimony may do so by way, by way of written testimony to be submitted as part of the official record. Anyone wishing to submit written testimony may do so by going to www.annapolis.gov backslash ABC. I declare the <clears throat> I declare the public hearing open and uh, new business. So, all right. So new license and expansion of license. Uh, do we have the Cigar Group LLC uh, trading as Vitola 121? Oh, wait, I'm so sorry. Yes. Uh, how are you? Yeah. All right. Here. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> would you like to begin your presentation, please? Yes, thank you very much, um, Chair Conger. I think I'll start by just uh, proffering some of the information about this license, and then we'll finish our presentation through testimony of Mr. Willett. Um, so I I'd like first of all, to let the board know that the other two individual licensees for this license are not able to be here this evening for uh, extenuating circumstances. One is out of the country and the other had a death in the family today. So um, Mr. Willett will be representing the licensee and he is one of the owners of uh, Vitola 121. So we'll get to that in testimony. But I also wanted to um, provide some context for all the members of the board about this particular license because it's a unique uh, liquor license in the time that I've been doing this in the city in that the license is applicable just to an accessory use um, for an existing um, zoning use in the city. This license is to apply for a cigar lounge on the second floor of an existing tobacco shop on Main Street. And um, the city council went through a uh, a very specific effort to create legislation to allow for that use and for that use to have the very specific license we're applying for tonight. So um, with that background, I'll say that I know you have a very long agenda tonight with many, many uh, applicants, and we don't want to use up your time. We know full well that you all have read all the materials we submitted um, justifying the need for the license and uh, the justification for the criteria that you need to look at to, to grant this license. But through testimony, um, after we swear Mr. Will, will let in, I'd like to have in the record the specific need for this license at this type of business because it is so unique. And I want Mr. Willett to have the chance to say that, you know, on his own words on the record. So with that, um, I would ask that we swear Mr. Willett in so that he can provide some of this information through testimony. All right. Thank you. Um Sir, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is true and correct? Yes. All right. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Shelton Willett, 1202 Bay Highlands Drive, Annapolis 21403. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Conger. Uh, Mr. Willett, as I stated in my um, my introduction, you are one of the owners of the the applicant entity. Is that correct? That's right. <clears throat> and and can you give the board a little bit of your background, both in 
uh, the cigar and tobacco shop industry and your specific relationship to this property and the application we're here for tonight? Sure. Well, my, uh, my, uh, uh, main, uh, uh, business is restaurant business. So I generally, uh, uh, run restaurants. So that was my main forte, but I love the cigar industry secondarily. So as far as the bars and uh, uh, managing all of those, especially Blackwall Hits, Blackwall Barn and Lodge, things like that, Reynolds Tavern, uh, that's my experience in the alcohol field. Uh, when it comes to the tobacco industry, I've become a uh, certified Somalia tobacconist, which is a person that pairs alcohol with tobacco and coffee so that we could uh, present a unique experience for uh, all of our guests as far as uh, expertise and questions that they have. It's more educational of a place and service as it is a traditional uh, uh, store. Thank you, Mr. Willett. And we'll come back to the, the specific need for that aspect of the experience at the tobacco shop, but getting right to the point for the licensed premises here, could you tell the board in your own words what we're planning to do or what you're planning to do at 121 Main Street um, in the physical renovation of this space that's going to be licensed? Well, the point is to innovate the business, to innovate the uh, cigar industry. So we will uh, we will have a a, a very classy, uh, high end uh, uh, space for uh, ladies and gentlemen to come and have a have a sort of an adult uh, experience uh, as luxury as we could possibly have it. Uh, the point of the of the alcohol is the pairings. So as we have a menu for. Uh, a certain cigar from a certain region paired with this uh, alcohol uh, is part of the process of the uh, of the brand so that there's all pairing process with with each uh, with each uh, cigar. And physically upstairs where you're going to be doing that for folks is at this pairing counter that you've shown and um, had approved by the Board of Appeals last night as a special exception accessory use for your business. Is that right? That's right. And what's that pairing counter going to look like? It'll it will we'll have like a beautiful selection of, of of spirits that maybe they've never seen before. Maybe the average uh the average person hasn't seen these uh these spirits before and an instruction of what is the best uh what is the best product to have with it. Uh, just a nice small uh uh area. Yeah, it's a relatively small area. So just this counter and some some seating for people to go and, and enjoy the the spirits you pair for them with the yeah. cigars that they uh that they've bought from you is that right that's right okay and it's the second floor is just open to members only right that's right yes okay and you said earlier that this is um an important experience now for tobacco shop customers is this um has this become something that people at all tobacco shops you know in Anne Arundel County in Maryland and outside of Maryland expect these days yeah it's an expected thing it's a uh... So the culture is 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 all over the country and it's expanding. So as we have more tourism, uh, it's an expected uh, uh, it's an expected event that something goes with their tobacco. Uh, a lot of times, if there is not that uh, if there is not that expected uh, uh, beverage, they will leave and most likely go home or, or things of that nature. So. so what you're saying is not only um a public demand for this, but it's essential for you to compete in your industry. The public expects it or they would choose other shops instead of yours. That's right. They'll choose the shop that they can have to drink with their uh, cigar. Yes. Right. I, I just wanted the, the board to understand the relationship between the cigars and the license we're asking for tonight. So thank you very much. Not just want to get some standard questions in the record and then we'll, we'll wrap up so the board can move on with its agenda. Okay. Um, but um, you already say that you've been in the restaurant business. You're confident you understand how to keep an orderly business here and, and make sure that people who are enjoying um, alcohol under this license, you know, behave in a, 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 a respectful manner. And there's not going to be any trouble outside on Main Street or inside the business because of this. Right. Absolutely. OK. And you'll have, you're already tips trained, but everybody under this license will also be tips trained. Yes. Everyone will be trained. OK. And, and for the crowd management training. By the time this license is issued, everyone, all the licensees and employees will also have that training? Yes, everyone will have it. Okay, thank you. And um, you understand that whether or not you and the other two licensees are present at the business, if anything were to happen, that's a violation of this license or the board's rules, that you'd be expected to show up and be accountable for that violation. Is that right? Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. And, and you've reviewed all the materials that were submitted for this application and everyone 
uh, associated with this license. The individual licensees and owners of the business and property ha have um, reviewed those materials and can verify the accuracy of those materials? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Willette. And um, I'm guessing the board may have some questions for us, given this is a unique license, but in the interest of time, we will stop there and answer any questions you may have. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going to go back because I forgot to read something. Um, so this is the for the application for a new alcoholic beverage license, Cigar Group LLC, trading as Vitola 121. Uh, an application for a new alcoholic beverage license, Class D-1AB, beer and wine and liquor, on sale 6 a.m. to 12 midnight, seven days a week, special Sunday license. In addition, off sale Monday through Saturday during authorized hours. In addition, off sale Sunday during authorized hours, special Sunday license by Sheldon Willette, Coy Banks, and Ruben Simpson for the premises known as Cigar Group LLC trading as Vitola 121, located at 121 Main Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Does the board have any questions regarding this? Dick, you're unmuted. Dick's got a question, Claire. Okay. Dick? Mr. Willett. Yes. Where in the city of Maryland could another person go and have a drink inside a liquor establishment or an establishment of liquor? Cigars. Can you it, tell it, me anywhere? It broke up a little bit when uh when you were talking. I'm, I'm sorry, I I will repeat. Okay. Where in the city of Annapolis could a customer go? and have a drink in an establishment that has an alcohol license. Can uh, you think of anywhere else? I think your question relates to tobacco. Anywhere else that they sell tobacco rather than, you said a liquor license where they can have alcohol, right? Where they can have alcohol and, and smoke. Right. This is the first legislation that allowed for this. So there is not one in Annapolis. There are two in the county. Two in the county. Yes. But nowhere in the city of Annapolis. There weren't allowed to be until the law was just changed uh, this past, within the last six months. And what, I'm not familiar with that change of that law. I'm, I'm going by the Maryland Open Air Act. Right. So the city, in accordance with the state law, and I, I'll let Mr. Lyle speak to how the city council processes legislation, created a new license that is applicable for tobacco shops, cigar lounges, um, specifically, where, and I think my understanding is that the distinction here is that uh, the Open Air Act relates to places where people might go to eat and drink and not want to have uh, tobacco smoke around them. And this license is for the, the other side of that coin, where people have come to tobacco shops, where everyone and anyone going there is already smoking, and now they are having a drink while they're smoking. So Mr. Mr. Uh, Lyles can answer questions you have about the legislation. My answer to you is that the, the city council just authorized this this year. That's why there are no other places. Yes, if you, Lyles. yes, if you have any additional questions, um, basically the state law uh, created a donut hole uh, for tobacco shops um, uh, that sold as on retail uh, tobacco lounges uh, that sold premium upscale tobacco um, as an exemption to the um, open air or the clean air act. Um, and the state law does not prohibit um, in that same law, uh, those restaurants or bars or taverns that sell tobacco as we call them uh, from selling alcohol. Um, so that exemption exists, the city um, is not bound uh, any by any additional restrictions, uh, having its own zoning authority and its own liquor license authority. So we passed the legislation uh, last year um, based on uh, community support um, and folks who testified at a hearing uh, on the lounge and the fact that this was one of the uh, the first minority businesses on the on Main Street. So and Mr. Charles, I believe that's a unanimous vote, correct? It was. And, and I would add, and I think this might help answer the question, that there are several other premises outside of Anne Arundel County, which obviously is in the state of Maryland, but Baltimore City has a uh, 
cigar lounge with the liquor license that I'm aware of. I believe there may be others. I know there's one, there was one in Montgomery until at least very recently. So this will not be the first of its kind by any means. Uh, it, was, it, would be the, it would be the first in Anne Arundel County and Annapolis. No, that's not correct. Anne Arundel County has two already that exist. And the city of Annapolis did not have a, a law allowing for it until now. So there aren't any in the city. But the only reason why is the law didn't exist until this year. Uh, additionally, the uh, the state allows uh, several of them throughout the state for individuals to bring uh, their own alcohol. So that is an option. So the state, obviously, in allowing folks to bring alcohol, uh, didn't create this a restriction or a prohibition on uh, alcohol licenses uh, with respect to this particular business model. Thank you. All right, are there any other questions from the board members? Chris. Chris. Are, are there any plans for um, any type of entertainment beyond drinking and smoking on the second floor? I.e., you know, any type of live music or, you know, anything that's loud in nature? No, sir. It's a very small space. Uh, Mr. Willett can confirm this, but there's there's no room for uh, any play, any kind of live entertainment space in the in the area that we're asking to license. Mr. Willett? Yes, it's very it's small. We just have enough room for uh, for seating. Uh, everyone will be seated and uh, they have purchased. Uh, we just have to have more room because there's only 20 seats in the in the uh, downstairs. This is just another small, it's another area that we have to make room for more of an upscale clientele. But no live entertainment area, correct? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, do I hear a motion? What's, um? are you going to be operating till midnight? Is that, or I guess my question is, how? what are your operating hours right now? They are 11 a.m., till uh, 11 a.m. to 10, Sunday through Wednesday, and 11 a.m. till midnight, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay, okay. so, you, so right. you will be open till midnight? Yes. On those two days? On, on those weekend days? Yes, yeah, Friday and Saturday. I have a question for Mr. Lyles. The only comparable license in the city is with um, uh, the... Uh, the the wine store over on um, Forest Drive, correct? Where grapes is. When you say they have wine tastings. When you say comparable, this is a a, a new. Um, this is the first of it. Okay, I thought I saw something a, in the. Yeah, this is the first the language. Yeah, this is the first. Of its, yeah, this is the first of its kind. Um, really, because of the um, what the council considered at the time was an expansion upon the entertainment of premium tobacco products in a way that um, was new and different. Uh, so they carved out this um, kind of license to deal with this kind of new uh, retail and lounge uh, service offering to consumers uh, in the city. And I can add to that. Um, Mr. Lyles is correct about the, the legislation. Mr. Sheehan's question is also, um, what, it, what Mr. Sheehan said was correct also in that the basis for this license was the uh, clock tower wine shop and then it's a class d tavern license this is different the 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 department planning and zoning and did not feel as though the same exact approach would work and that was the need to create legislation based on what that class d license does at clock tower thank you that was helpful um mr lyles just a quick question so i understand you know tobacco shops are falling into they've been allowed to fall into that tavern category but they're exempt from the food aspect of the, the code is that right well <laughs> um <clears throat> let's let's say this this is a new uh, area of law um a lot of this is first impression um and the council did not hear anything about food offerings here I think that um, if there were food offerings inside the location where food was being prepared, that would probably um, implicate another law having to do with uh, health and, and smoking. That uh, is correct. And also, I would say for everyone's benefit, last night on under oath, we testify that we won't be serving food um, because in part that would require uh, a grease trap that we are not looking to provide. 
And so for the special exception, we've already asserted that there won't be food service. However, I would say that, you know, whether someone brings a sandwich in is a different thing, and that might be allowable um, in establishments that wanted to do that. Um, and but here we're talking about whether or not uh, the alcohol license is appropriate and that license had to be carved out by the council. And it was in this particular instance, mainly because they had the one uh, establishment, Vitola, asking for uh, a crafting of such. But the council is well aware um, that these uh, kinds of things need to be reviewed. And that's why they put in the special exception so that the um, the commission, the Board of Appeals could review the upscale, whether these things were uh, upscale in nature, not causing any disturbance uh, and the like. So uh, there are several different checks and balances, including uh, from this uh, learned body as well. And, and Mr. Chitwood, the, um, I think maybe what I heard in your question is whether they're required to sell food. Class D license, tavern licenses are the one type that does not yeah. sell food. It's the only type that only sells alcohol. And yes, it was specifically chosen because the there are restrictions on tobacco shops selling something more than tobacco, more than they sell tobacco. And so this is the appropriate license for a tobacco shop. Or, that was the council's decision. And when was this decision? Uh, the, the, I'm referring to the legislation. The council decided that that was the appropriate license in passing the law. And when was this? Uh, Mr. Lyles, did that pass in early 2024 or late 2023? Um, well, this is early 24. The legislation has been on the books for over a year. I think it was it was 2023 that it was adopted. It was introduced and, and was amended a, and adopted it, in 2023. It was early 2023. Or spring, spring, you know, springtime. Thank you. All right. Um, are there any any further questions? Do I hear a motion? I move we approve. I second. All right. Um, that's been seconded. Can I hear a vote um, of other, sorry, of other approvals? Just say aye. 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 All right. That Dick. passes. Hmm? Dick? Dick. No. You... Dick's no. All right. Um, so that, that passes with a vote of three yes, one no. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you, members of the board. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving on to our next application for a new alcoholic beverage license for Rum House LLC trading as Rum House. Do I have? Who's who's here for Rum House? Um, oh, sorry. So this is an application for a new alcoholic beverage license B-2 beer, wine, and liquor only with meals 6 a.m. to 12 midnight, seven days per week, special Sunday license by Edward Zebowitz and uh Corsi Leibovitz. I hope I'm pronouncing those names correctly. For the pre premises known as Rum House LLC, trading as Rum House located at 422 6th Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Is there someone here for Rum House? Cindy. Madam Chairman. I'm Anthony F. Cristo, if I'm the attorney for the applicants. Um, they are across the table from me, Dr. Edward Zibovitz. I'm going to lose my voice. Um, and Dr. Corey Zibovitz. Um, they would indicate to you that they're the sole members of these arms. Ezoms LLC, which is the owner of the 422 6th Street property, which is the subject of this application. They're also the sole members of Rum House LLC, which is the tenant and the operator at that premises. Uh, they're proposing a 49 seat restaurant at that location. Also present um, across the table from me is 
Terry Schumann, who's the engineer for the project, and John Harrison, seated to my right, who is a recognized expert in the field of planning by a land use expert. All right. Uh, Wonderful. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, minor site design plan approval was approved for the project by the City Department of Planning and Zoning. June 14, 2023, and the renovation and remodeling of the building is currently underway. I would also note to you that I posted the property on February 12, mailed a notice to all property owners on February 12, and affidavits to that effect have been submitted to the city clerk. The notice of the hearing was published in the Capitol on February 26, and March 4, and a certification publication furnished to Ms. Gaines. Also, at this time, I would move into the record as applicants exhibit one the complete application with documents establishing the applicant's compliance with all requirements, including the real property ownership tax payment, voter registration, completion of alcohol training awareness programs for both applicants, and a completion of crowd management course. Uh, given the board's schedule, if the board's agreeable, I would propose to proffer the testimony of Dr. Corice Zibovitz and then have her confirm that or add anything that she chooses. And then we have with us John Harrison, who's recognized, as I indicated, uh, as an expert and has testified before this board before, uh, particularly on the issue of need for the new license. Okay. Um, for all of those testifying, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about, about to give is correct and true? True and correct. And you can say yes. yes. And then I'll... And then I'll need you to state your name and address for the record, please. Therese Zibovitz, 3319 Shore Drive, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Right. John Harrison, 707 Linden Avenue, Annapolis, 21403. Okay. Is anyone else? Madam Chair. Pardon? I've already introduced myself. Mm -hmm. Schumann is across the table. Uh, Terry Schumann, um, Atwell, um, we do have an address. Just yes, please. Uh, address um, uh, 2661 Reaver Road, Building 800, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Edward Zibovitz, um, Edward Zibovitz uh, 3319 Shore Drive, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Thank you. If I could, then, Madam Chair, uh, the proffer that Dr. Corey Zibovitz would make uh, confirm the representation I just made regarding the information contained in the application. She would indicate that the applicant's intention is to establish a restaurant with a menu specializing in the Caribbean food and feature, featuring a variety of island rums. Uh, she would note that there's nothing similar. The only thing that could be even compared, I think, is Pusser's, which is, as I understand, closing in October. Uh, she or They have engaged uh, a full-time chef consultant and a full-time manager with extensive restaurant experience to uh, oversee the operation of the restaurant. Notwithstanding that, either she or her husband intend to be on the site during all operational hours. The intention is to hire local employees in order to assure compliance with age requirements for service of alcohol. All servers will be required to have taken the tips course. She and her husband understand and accept the responsibility that goes with the service of alcohol. And I can just ask her if she can confirm that as her testimony and add anything if she chooses. Yeah, I agree with that this morning. Thank you, uh, Tony. All right, thank you. All right, and we would then call John Harrison as our next witness, asking him to identify himself uh, and his profession. Yeah, um, I gave my address a little bit earlier. My name is John Harrison. I'm a land use planner. Um, just briefly, I've got a master's degree in urban and regional planning from the University of Virginia. I had over 30 years of experience with uh, local governments, including about 18 as planning director for the city of Annapolis. And have you previously been recognized by this board as an expert in the determination of need for alcoholic beverage licenses at particular locations in the city? Yes, both by this board and by the Anne Arundel County Board of Control. And did you undertake such a determination for this application? Yes, I did. Would you indicate uh, specifically uh, the information that has to be addressed relative to this use by the city alcoholic beverage application form and what you have concluded regarding that. Yeah, there's uh, four uh, required findings. There's public need, the existing licenses in the area and the potential effect on them, 
to the uniqueness of this particular application and the impact on public health, safety, and welfare. You want me to just run through them or do you want to ask you questions? I'll run through them. Okay, the, under the um, need uh, finding, uh, this, this restaurant is proposed to be a fine dining establishment serving primarily Caribbean cuisine in an intimate setting. It will provide table service only and will feature rum cocktails as the name, as the name applied. Um, restaurants, especially fine dining restaurants, you know, it's almost axiomatic. They need to provide beer, wine, and cocktails to complete the dining experience for their patrons. Um, rum House will offer food and drink that's not currently available in the vicinity. It'll pro provide the public with a convenient additional dining option, especially persons seeking island fare and different types of rum, rum drinks. Um, and that that's what I can't really need is kind of runs through this whole this whole analysis. Within 1,800 feet on the Eastport side of, of um, Spa Creek, there are 12 establishments with some form of alcoholic beverage license. Most of them have bars associated with them. Eastport Kitchen does not. I think that's the only one. None of them offer specialty rum drinks or uh, Caribbean cuisine. Uh, rum House will not have a bar, unlike all the other uh, restaurant bars in the area. And it'll have a distinct Caribbean theme and vibe. It will be unique among all the other license holders in terms of how it's going to operate, the food it's going to serve, the drinks it's going to specialize in. And it may even bring new diners into the area who will see all the other restaurants and then decide to try different restaurants in the area once they're exposed to uh, Restaurant Row and play other places in Eastport. It sits, the Rum House itself sits between an art gallery, Nancy Hammond's new gallery, and a 24-hour uh, convenience store, the Royal Farms. Uh, Sixth Street in that area is actually designated as a minor arterial road in the city's comprehensive plan. They have arranged for adequate nearby off-street parking, and the, this use at this location uh, with the liquor license will not negatively impact the public health, safety, or welfare, or increase congestion on public streets. Uh, I have talked to the alderman, and he's actually looking forward to it, and he hasn't heard any negative comments from his constituents regarding this particular this particular proposed restaurant. Madam Chairman, that would conclude our direct presentation. We are available for questions from the board, obviously. All right, thank you. Does the board have any questions? I have a question. Mr. Aronson. Yes. You, you mentioned adequate parking. Where? Well, I'll let them answer it because they arranged it. Yeah, so go ahead, Tony. We have four spaces on site and a lease has been approved by the owner directly across the street, across 6th Street, for additional spaces after 5 p.m. seven days a week. So there's a total of eight spaces available. Uh, the restaurant actually only requires seven by code. Okay, this is eight spaces for, I think I heard 50 people. Well, I see 49, but close enough. Okay, thank you. City code is parking uh, at 30% of capacity. And since I don't do math publicly, I won't <laughs> hazard. <laughs> I, I couldn't hear you, sir. The city requires 30% of capacity for off street parking. All right. Um... Chris. Chris? Yeah, I had a quick question for you. It was unclear to me in the application, but are you planning or, or is the facility planning to offer breakfast and or lunch? We're not planning to offer breakfast. We'll have lunch only on the weekends, brunch. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve? Or do I hear I a motion? move we approve. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. I hear a second. Um, can I have have a vote, please? Aye. 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 All right. That is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. All right. Um, now I have, uh, I've heard that number four on our docket tonight, um, that would be Enterprise Incorporated has removed their request for tonight. So we are going to move on to number five, which is the request for the extension of a sidewalk cafe seating with consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property. That is Stan and Joe's for dinner under the stars. Their request is to extend the sidewalk cafe seating with the service of food and the consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property with live music to Stan and Joe's Saloon for dinner under the stars scheduled on April 21st, 27th, May 1st, 4th, 8th, 11th, 15th, 18th, 22nd, 25th, 29th, June 1st, 5th, 8th, 12th, 15th, 19th, 22nd, 26th, 29th, July 3rd, 6th, 10th, 13th, 17th, 20th, 24th, 27th, 31st, August 3rd, 7th, 10th, 14th, 17th, 21st, 24th, 28th, 31st, September 4th, 7th, 11th, 14th, 18th, 21st, 25th, 28th, and October 2nd, 5th, 9th, 12th, 16th, 19th, 23rd, and 26th of 2024 from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. at 37 West Street, Maryland, 21401, sponsored by the Inner West Street Association. Do we have someone here tonight from Stan and Joe's? Joe McGovern, owner. Address. Yes. 37, 37 West Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. And Joe, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is true and correct? Absolutely. Thank you. And you've already stated your name and address for the record. So thank you for that. So what would you like to tell us about this year's Dining Under the Stars? Well, uh, we've been doing this for years now. I think I might uh, segue to Audrey who there, who is, who is in charge of the Inner West Street uh, Association, if that's okay with the board. That's fine. Actually, is it possible to lump all uh, the restaurants into this as one group, or do we have to go through each restaurant individually? Um, Attorney Lyles, are we allowed to do that, or do I have to go through the... Usually we've done that in the past. Well, you can, but the problem I'm looking at is that the dates are different. Like for... They should um, all be... San and Joe's, you got the first Sunday Arts Festival. So I, I guess you got to do the different festivals. Yeah, right. yeah, I think you can lump them together as long as the dates are the same. All right. But you uh, got you, you got two different events. You got the first Sunday Arts Festival. That's a separate event. And you got Dinner of the Stars. So you've got to okay. kind of separate them out in your uh, colloquy for the minutes. Oh. I... I'm afraid to say I don't know how to do that. Okay, let me, let me help you. So basically what you need is a motion uh, okay. to approve uh, this extension of Sidewalk Cafe for Dinner Under the Stars, for the Dates Red, for Stan and Joe Saloon, and approve also the following restaurants. Luna Blue, um, tsunami, Picante, 49 West Coffee House, Level, Ram's Head. That's how it has to be stated. Okay, ready quickly. Sorry, guys. So basically, you can read what you read the first time and say, I, you know, you have to have a motion to apply what you read in the first for Standing Joe's to all of the other restaurants and just kind of list them. So, in the blue. So, what you could say is, yep. I'll entertain a motion to add yep. the, the following additional restaurants to the approval for extension of a sidewalk cafe. All right. Thank you so much. Um, uh, do I have a motion to approve the following restaurants to add them to what I've just read for? 
uh, Stan and Joe's, and those restaurants would be Luna Blue, Tsunami, and this is for Dining Under the Stars, Luna Blue, Tsunami, uh, oh. Level, Ram's Head, Picante, Picante, and 49, uh, West, Coffee, 49 West Coffee House. 49 West Coffee House. I move. Second. Second. All right. Um, those who uh, those who want to vote, please vote. Or all in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Now, do the same thing for the first Sunday Arts Festival. All right. For for the first Sunday Arts Festival, I would like to add to um, Stan and Joe's the following restaurants, Luna Blue, Tsunami, Level, Ram's Head, 49 West Coffee House, and Picante. Do I hear a motion? Give, give the date. No. Give oh, the date. Uh, oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> the, the dates are all the same, but you have to, you have to still read them. Okay. Um, scheduled on April 21st, 27th, May 1st, 4th, 8th, 11th, 15th, 18th, 22nd, 25th, 29th. I think, Claire, Excellent. actually, the Excellent. dates for the um, for uh, the for, first Sunday Arts Festival oh, should be May 5-5-6-2-7-7. My mistake. Sorry. Scheduled... Uh, the first Sunday Arts Festival is scheduled for May 5th, June 2nd, July 7th, August 4th, September 1st, October 6th, November 3rd, and December 1st, with a rain date of December 8th, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., 36 West Street, Maryland, 21401. This is sponsored by Inner West Street Association. Do I so hear a move? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and thank you, <laughs> thank you all for your help. I'm sorry. Good job, <laughs> Great, Great job. job, Claire. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Good night. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So after that, we are. And I'm just checking. We are we should be down to 19. Is that correct? That's correct, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. Um, at number 19, we have an application for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property uh, for Warrior Events 2024 Shamrock on the Dock. An application for consumption of alcoholic beverages on the city property to Warrior Events. For the 2024 Shamrock the Dock scheduled on March, March 16th, 2024, from noon to 10 p.m. and March 17th, 2024, from noon to 9 p.m., location 1 Dock Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401, known as Susan Campbell Park. Do we have somebody here from Warrior Events? It's John O'Leary. I am here. All right. Um, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is true and correct? If you could just raise your right hand, please. I do. All right. And please state your name and address for the record. John O'Leary at 1201 Crummel Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. All right. Would you like to tell us a little bit about what you have planned for the Shamrock the Dock? Sure. Shamrock the Dock is a two-day festival that coincides before and after with the coincides and is with the St. Patrick's Parade, which this year is on St. Patrick's Day, the 17th. The festival is a music and uh, cultural festival to celebrate Irish culture as well as uh, music. Um, this is our Seventh Shamrock the Dock, and the second that is a two day festival. Uh, so mm -hmm. we will have we will have um, this year we will have food trucks as well as catering in a VIP area, 
we will have two different tents and two different stages, which is what we had last year as well. Um, and it seems like there's a lot of excitement about it. Tickets are moving pretty well. So that's a good thing. Okay. And um, would you like to tell me about how you're going to handle security and keeping? Absolutely. This year we are, so last year we had one security company, SAFE, S.E. That's a, a regional company that supports the Naval Academy Stadium, the Raven Stadium, et cetera. We have hired them. They will be on st- they will be on site from Monday morning, which begins the build of the tents this coming Monday at 11, uh, 311 through the following Monday. We also have during the open hours, two additional security firms that specialize in large crowds and festivals. Um, both of those organizations have crowd control certified individuals. I also have three individuals on my staff that are crowd control certified. Um, and the, um, the additional security firms have tips controlled um, individuals as well as my catering company and all of our bartenders that work the event. So um, we have increased the, the level and amount of security um, that will be present. And we anticipated larger numbers this year. Um, and we actually have more crowd control certified and individuals that are um, trained in handling the larger crowds. Okay. Um, I think, I think that kind of describes, well, I guess, I guess um, in both cases um, we've, when the show is open, when the, when the festival is open, we have doubled the amount of security. I, I only say that beca- because um, in, in anticipation of additional folks being there, but last year it was, it was, there were no, um, there were new incidences that required heavy level of security. So that was a good thing. It's more of a happy, everyone seemed to be pretty happy about this event. So we, we intend for, on that to continue. All right. Do the board members have any questions? I'm over Anything new this year? I'm sorry, I heard you both at the same time. Oh, go ahead, Dick. No, you go ahead. I was just going to ask if there's anything different this year. Oh, we have more characters, Ryan, so you can bring your kids down. Um, we have stilt walkers that were present both days. Um, we have a a series of fairies and leprechauns, et cetera, that were there that were present after the parade last year. They're also going to be there this Saturday. So your kids or yourself might be interested in in checking that out. Noted. Mean, Thank you. You mean Saturday a week? Yeah. Not this Saturday. The, the week 16th. Of, yeah, the 16th and the 17th. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve. Second. Claire, you're muted. Claire, you're muted. Thank you. Um, I had a moment to, to take it. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much for that. Good luck, John. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, I guess... We have to do the same for the Holy then? Yeah. It's a separate event? Separate event. Separate event, yes. Different event, yes. Different dates. Yep. So uh, number 20 is an application for consumption of alcoholic beverage on City Property Warrior Events 2024 (laughs) for the Holy. An application for consumption of alcoholic beverages on city property to water warrior events for the 2024 Huli scheduled March 15th, 2024 from mm-hmm. 5 to 10 p.m. Location, location 1 Dock Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401 in Susan Campbell Park. Um, do we have, I guess. <laughs> John, I think you have to, I think John has I, to give I, his, <laughs> his name and address yeah. again and probably yeah. has to. 
Uh, so my name is John O'Leary. I, I reside at 1201 Crummel Avenue, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Okay, and do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct? I do. Thank you. All right, so is there anything uh, you'd like to share about this event? Is this different from previous events? Uh, this event has repeated um, on City Dock. This is our fourth year on City Dock with the Huli, which is a fundraiser for the parade to help pay for things like the busing that we provide from the stadium to downtown um, for the participants and the city visitors. Um, and it also helps pay for some of the, or all of the acts that um, we bring in from out of town to make this parade one of the, becoming one of the larger and well-known on the East Coast. Um, this particular event has become quite popular. Um, there have been and will be uh, celebrities that, or I call them celebrities, but um, some noted individuals in the community that will, will attend um, the the party itself, the Huli itself, actually sold out in a day last August and has grown in uh, about 50% in the amount of people, um, all of which adds to the weekend um, as far as an attraction to the city and the I can tell by the hotel fees and the fact that they're selling out um, that uh, it has become a destination because of the things like the Huli and then the follow on Shamrock the Dock. So the only the only difference between the Huli and Shamrock the Dock is that um, it's a it's a dinner event, a catered event in that regard. And we actually have one less stage. We only have one large tent for the Huli rather than the two stages and two tents. Does the board have any questions? No, I move we approve. All right, do I hear a second? Second. Second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that passes. Thank you so much for your time this evening. And um, I think we are moving on to, yep, Iron Rooster is next. So number 21 tonight is a written request to extend the issuance of an expansion of an alcoholic beverage license Iron Rooster at Iron Rooster. LLC trading as Iron Rooster. Mm -hmm. Is Iron Rooster here? Somebody for Iron Rooster here? Hi, I'm Chair Conger. Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right. So it looks like the license pickup date was April 2023 pickup date plus 180 days is October 4th, 2020. So this would be the second extension for October 22nd or October 2nd, 2024. Yeah, I I, um, I just wanna give the, the board the update on the progress to build out these spaces and you know the rationale, the reason we need this extension. Um, as you're all aware, historic downtown presents unique challenges with regard to fire safety <laughs> and ADA access. And this is an existing license that this board approved to expand into two um, adjacent buildings. And um, while that's the applicant's ready to move forward and construction is ready to go, the um, specific questions about how to manage fire safety um, have been raised by the city. And we are trying to work out both the um, the city's preferred solutions and the documentation that needs to be in effect with regard to easements and the city's access to those fire safety systems. So um, we are eager to get started on construction and um, I think we're very close, but we've been working actively with the Office of Law and um, the administration as Attorney Lyles can attest. Um, and I think we, we should be able to start construction soon and um, but since we haven't, we need this extension today. All right. Uh, any questions from the board members? How long, once construction does start, what's what do you estimate a timeline for completion? You know, that is a good question. Um, it, it's going to be tight on the, the need for you know, a third. 
Yeah. Well, there isn't an, an option there. So we may need legislation to extend that or, um, you know, some sort of judicial relief. But at this time, this is our, our available remedy. Um, construction typically for these things, in my understanding, takes roughly eight months, you know, on average. And if you get it done quickly, you can go shorter than that. And if you go, if it goes longer, it can take longer. Um, but in this case, I, I don't want to speak to the particulars. The architect has not told me a specific amount of time. Um, and I, I know that each building downtown is unique and presents its own challenges. So I don't want to uh, say it's going to be a certain amount of time and be wrong. But I, I, I can say we're ready to start very soon and we'll try not to need any further relief. But um, frankly, this has been a, a, a specifically difficult project to get started with in terms of getting the building permits issued because of the um, really what causes fire safety issues is the opening of existing um, party walls. And this is a connecting one space or a, a restaurant into two adjacent buildings where the, the party walls have to be opened up. And of course, the, the fire system, the sprinkler will be there. It just the um, what the city wants us to have in place for uh, documentation of access to that and make sure it's maintained is all we're we're working out. And that's that's complex. It's the city. It's the applicant who's doing the work and then the landlords who had three different buildings. So we've got to coordinate a lot of parties here. We're, we're doing our best to get it, get it done, start fast as we can. Mr. Dales. Yes. Is Miss Black your client? She is. Uh, is she in the waiting room? No, uh, she's here. She, she okay. is. She's muted. I can't see her on my screen. So thank you for letting me know, Dick. There she is. Claire, you may want to swear her in. Uh, yes. Um, let's see. I don't see her. Ms. Black? Yes, here? I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. Do you sell, if you could raise your right hand, do you yep. solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is true and correct? Yes. All right. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Heather Black of 428 Manor Road, Arnold, Maryland, 21012. All right. So is there anything else you'd like to add to what Mr. Dale said? No, I think that about covers it. All right. Just checking. Um, and uh, does the board have any questions? No, do I hear a motion to approve um, this except the second extension? I'll move. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all Aye. right, that passes. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck and hopefully it goes quickly for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And next on the docket, we have extension of license premises during a special event, Ram's Head Tavern celebration of St. Patrick's Day. This request is for an extension of license premise for consumption of alcohol beverages to Ram's Head Tavern for the use of the private parking lot in the rear of the establishment during the celebration of St. Patrick's Day scheduled on March 16th and 17th 2024 during normal business hours, location 33 West Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Is anyone here for Ram's Head? Yes, Michael Lechner, 1356, Wiley Oak Drive in Jarrettsville, Maryland, 21084. Wonderful, thank you. Do you solemn, if you could raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is true and correct. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, would you like to tell us about this event? Yeah, so we are going into, uh, this will be our 19th year of our uh, extension into our, our St. Patrick's Day celebration. Um, as you would stated, we're just <laughs> going into the back parking lot behind our restaurant. Um, <clears throat> we've got approval from uh the owners of the parking lot, as well as the tenants who uh, live right across from us 
uh, to use the parking lot for both days, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so again, we're just looking to, we're going to be constructing a tent as we do every year um, with uh, moving our alcohol uh, sales out into that tent along with music throughout the day. Um, Saturday, it'll actually be just in the evening and then Sunday all day. Um, we'll have a team of um, seven security personnel throughout the building and at all entrances and exits that will be checking IDs and wristbanding everyone that comes into the tent. Uh, as well as monitoring the uh, consumption of alcohol during the during the event. So we again, uh, 19 years. Uh, if it wasn't for COVID, this would be our 20th, but we had to skip one. So um, 19 years, and we have uh, not had a single incident uh, in any of the time that we've ever had this this event. So, all right. Well, thank you for that. Does the board have any questions? No. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? I move. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right, that passes. Thank you so much. And Thank you very much. Thank your time this evening. All right, number 23 is open to the public event number one, Eastport Democratic Club Eastport Green Beer Races. This is a request for an open to the public event number one to Eastport Democratic Club Eastport Green Beer Races scheduled on March 9th, 2024 from noon to 6 p.m. Location 525 State Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Hi, Joe Deshawn for the Eastport Democratic Club, 1320 Black Walnut Court, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Thank you. And sir, if you could raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that this testimony you are about to give is true and correct? Mm -hmm. Right, thank you for that. Um, what would you like to tell us about this event? Uh, we have an existing permit for an event on Saturday the 9th for our annual green beer races, which we've done for many years. Uh, we have weather concerns. Uh, right now there is an over 90% chance of significant rain on that day. And what we are here to request is the ability to move that event to Sunday if the outlook does not improve for Saturday, but still be able to make that choice as weather uh, updates. All right. Um, Attorney Lyles, are we able to do this? Have a, this, this is just scheduling a rain date, correct? I strike. All right. All right, thank you. So- what, what's your question? I'm I just so this is this is just it's not adding a date. It's just creating a rain date, which we've done for other events. Oh, yeah, okay. yes, you're, you're good to go. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, does the board have any questions? No, if not, um, I do. I have a motion to approve. The rain I move we approve. All right, do I have a second? second. All right, thank you, Chris. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, you have your rain date. Um, hopefully the weather cooperates with you this weekend. Thank you for your time this evening, we appreciate it. Not a problem, you too, thank you. Um, next, next item on the agenda is a request for seasonal usage of the city pilot program for outside dining for Boatyard Bar and Grill. A request for the seasonal usage of the city pilot program for outside dining with service of alcohol and food to 90 miles to Cuba Incorporated trading as Boatyard Bar and Grill at 404th Street in Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. Do we have someone here for Boatyard? Kevin's here. Good evening, Madam Chair. It's Kevin Sendel, General Manager, Boatyard Bar and Grill. Uh, my address is 412 Golf Course Drive, Arnold, Maryland, 21012. All right, Kevin, if you could raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is true and correct? I do. Thank you. So what would you like to share with us? Oh yeah, well, we're here tonight to uh, ask for your approval to serve alcohol under the city's uh, pilot program for outdoor dining. This will be our fifth year uh, of uh, extending to the outside area. Um, we're going to do everything um, exactly the same that we've done every year. 
Uh, so we're going to serve uh, uh, seated diners outside underneath a tent in an enclosed contained space. Uh, our servers are TIP certified. Our managers are crowd control certified. Um, we, we intend to uh, have this outdoor space from early April to early November. And it'll be an exact carbon copy of, of what we've done in the past four years. Um, to my knowledge, we haven't had any complaints uh, the way we operate. Um, we uh, take great care to control, uh, um, make sure all the drinks are kept on site and that we're um, done uh, with service outside uh, at a, a reasonable time. Um, so we're just asking to do what we've done for the past four years. All right. Do the board members have any questions? I move we approve. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Good luck, Kevin. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have uh, several events for special class C one day liquor license, Annapolis Maritime Museum, Annapolis Oyster Roast, and Sock Burning. Um, guys, do we want to combine these yeah, events? I, I make a motion we combine the uh, the uh, so combine um, boatyard the, beach bash, boatyard beach bash, sock burning, Annapolis oyster roast, and sock tides burning, and, and tides and tunes on the dates specified. Okay, can we can we do that? My suggestion would be to read oh, each one individually. Read. I can do that. Move, and then move them all together. But you should read them individually because they're different dates. And Cindy needs to make sure that that's all taken care of in the minutes. Thank you, Attorney Lyles. So um, these would be uh, 25, 26, and 27th on the document. So this would be a special C, uh, Class C one-day liquor license for the Annapolis Maritime U Museum Tides and Tunes Summer Concert Series. The application for a special C-Class one-day liquor license, beer, wine, and liquor, including live music to Annapolis Maritime Museum Tides and Tunes Summer Concert Series, scheduled on Thursday, June 13th, 20th, and 27th, July 11th, 18th, and 25th, and August 1st, 8th, and 15th, and 22nd, 2024, 6 to 9.30 p.m., located at 723 2nd Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. This, this includes also, uh, sorry, special class C one-day liquor license for the Annapolis Maritime Museum, Annapolis Oyster Roast and Sock Burning. This application is for a special C class one-day liquor license, beer, wine, and liquor, including live music to Annapolis Maritime Museum, Annapolis Oyster Roast and Sock Burning, scheduled on March 23rd, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., located at 723 2nd Street, Annapolis, Maryland, 21403. This is including uh, also a special class C one-day liquor license, Annapolis Maritime Museum, Boatyard Beach Bash. This application is for a special C class one-day liquor license, beer, wine, and liquor, including live music to Annapolis Maritime Museum, Boatyard Beach Bash, scheduled on September 21st, 2024, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., 11 a.m. to 4 and to 10 p.m. Is that correct? I think it's four to ten. Four to ten. Four to ten. Four. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it's not what I have written here, but um, from four to ten p.m. Location seven two three Second Street, Annapolis, Maryland two one four zero three. Do I hear a motion to approve this combining? All right. Do I hear a second? Motion. Second. second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion um, passes. So, do we have someone here from? <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> from the Annapolis Maritime Museum. Yes, Claire. Um, Alice Estrada. I'm president and CEO of the Annapolis Maritime Museum. We also have our vice president of development, Kelly Schwartout, and our events coordinator, Lizzie Spokely. Wonderful. Thank you. If you could all raise your right hand. Um, do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you are about to give is true and correct? Yes. All right. And could you please state your name and address for the record, all of the people who are here for the Annapolis Maritime Museum? 
I'm Alice Estrada, 1764 Broadway Trail, Annapolis, Maryland, 21401. Allie Swartout, 1690 Winchester Road, Annapolis, Maryland, 21409. 1004 Allen Avenue, West River, Maryland, 20778. Thank you guys. Would you like to tell me about or tell us about these events? Certainly. Um, these are uh, unique Annapolis events that have been hosted for a number of years, beginning with the Annapolis Oyster Ro Roast and Sock Burning. Um, I, I generally like to explain, you know, why the events and why we do them. And I'll let uh, Lizzie Spokely, our events coordinator, explain logistics and our management of the event. But we are a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to educate youth and adults about Annapolis's rich maritime heritage and the ecology of the Chesapeake Bay. So we really do try and impart that in all of our events. And the oyster roast and sock burning, I mean, we're a former oyster packing plant, which really makes sense for us to, to host this event. And the sock burning is a unique Annapolis tradition where they burn their socks at the spring equinox. <laughs> Um, that is um, coming up here on March 23rd, 2024. The summer concert series or Tides and Tunes, as it's known, has been going on for a number of years. It's, it, you know, to be honest, it's grown in popularity um, and we're, <clears throat> we're managing it. Um, we've had some growing pains, but we're doing a good job. And it's been all due in great part to the guidance from this liquor board. You've really helped us with some um, um procedures and we've implemented them uh, that's Ju july set i'm sorry june 13th through august 22nd um and that happens for 10 weeks over the summer at our museum park camp i mean um, our museum campus and lastly we do the boatyard beach bash which is where we invite the coral reefer band um thanks to our board member and friend dick franio he has connections with the coral reefers which are you don't know Jimmy Buffett's band members and they come up and do a benefit concert for us uh, sort of, you know, on the fall equinox. So right at the end of summer is the last hurrah of summer on Saturday, September 21st. And uh, again, I will say that we have really become very buttoned up over the years with professional bartenders that are all tips trained. We all of our staff has been crowd controlled and, and recently gone through all the courses and we hire um, Annapolis City Police off-duty police officers for all our events. In fact, they're our great friends and they do such a great job. I can't say enough good things about them. Um, and Lizzie, you please fill in the blanks where I've left off if you don't mind. I think you're on mute. Yes. So for all of our events too, everyone is wristbanded. Um, that's important so that we don't have anybody trying to sneak in. Um, they're wristbanded and ID'd at the front gate. Um, for our ticketed events, which is Boatyard Beach Bash and the Oyster Roast and Sock Burning, um, their tickets are uh, checked at the front and then they're banded and um, they can purchase drink tickets as well. Um, and then like Alice mentioned, for security purposes, we have our uniformed police officers on site for all of the events for Oyster Roast, Tides and Tunes, and for the Boatyard Beach Bash. And then in terms of crowd control management, um, in the last couple of years, this has really helped so that we don't have guests spilling out into the street. We have barriers in place um, that will keep our guests on the museum campus. Um, that seemed to help with our growing crowds over the years and also help uh, appease our neighbors too so that we can um, be nice and respect um, that they were sharing a street with them as well. Mm -hmm. And, and yep. just so you know, we, we give our immediate neighbors complimentary tickets to yes, all of us. Um, we, we notify them, we let them know they're happening, and they generally take us up on that offer. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, did I forget anything? No, I was just going to mention that we do notify all of our neighbors, especially the Eastport Yacht Center, um, because they're directly across the street and they have um, their residents coming in and out all day long. So we make sure that that's open and um, clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Does the board have any questions? No? 
Um, I move we approve all three um, items. Second. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you guys so much. And Thank you. 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 And I think that is the end of tonight's docket. Am I correct in that? All right. Wendy's saying yes. Yes. So, <laughs> to, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Madam Chairman, I move we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? 